things are possible. Let us remain standing for a moment of prayer. Let's bow our heads. Dear God, we deem this a great privilege tonight to be here uh, on this occasion to bring a living Christ to a dying world and a dying generation. We would ask, Lord, that you would anoint our words and our efforts that they will not return to you void, but may they accomplish that which they are purposed for. Help every man, woman, boy, or girl here tonight that's needy. And Father, we know we're all needy. And when we leave tonight, may we feel in our hearts like those who came from Emmaus after the, had witnessed the resurrection of Christ saying, Did not our hearts burn within us as he spoke to us along the way? Grant it, Lord. Heal the sick and the afflicted. May there not be any feeble among us after the service tonight. And above all things, may there not be one unbeliever left, Lord. May they all believe to eternal life, for that's our purpose of gathering here. These blessings we ask to the honor of the kingdom of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. You be seated. It's good tonight to be back here, and I see we got a few standing around. And I think the, the phones are open now uh, to many different cities across the nation, San Francisco, Tucson, up in the east. And we, through the telephone, send greetings to them. We're in the auditorium here tonight, and the main auditorium is packed out, and the aisles and around the walls are standing full of people. And we understand that tomorrow night we're going to try to open up another side here to the gym and get a larger auditorium that will take care of maybe a couple more thousand people. So we're hoping that tomorrow night, if it's filled up tonight, the first night, while well, we believe it will be greater tomorrow night. And I see they set in extra chairs and everything also tonight. We're under great anticipations. First, the coming of the Lord Jesus. The next, the salvation of to lost souls that would receive him tonight and be ready for his coming when he appears. I want to offer a special greeting and welcome to all these fine men on the platform, which I understand many of them are ministers, a couple of hundred or more sitting on the platform, and we're certainly thankful that they're here. To all you people, wherever you are, different parts of the nation, and I understand that some are here from across the sea. Overseas, So we're grateful for you to be here to enjoy this fellowship with us, which we're under anticipations that God is going to give us during this meeting. It seems like that since I thought of coming back for these few days of meeting, that my own heart has been alarmed strangely with a great feeling that something's just about to take place. I don't know just what it is. But I hope that it's a great revelation from God that will prepare us and make us better citizens of his kingdom while we're walking in this dark world of sin and unbelief. This ground tonight, this very spot, holds a great thing for me. Since I knew that they built this school auditorium here, I have wanted to have a service in this place. I'm very grateful to the school board and to those who graciously let us have it. It is upon this spot, right about somewhere where this building stands tonight, that a great thing took place some 30 years ago right on this same ground. It was nothing but a broom sage field at that time. And I lived in a little house 
just beyond here, about 200 yards. I was very concerned in those days about the salvation of my father and mother, which both are gone on tonight. And especially in that day, I was concerned about my father. I remember I was sleeping on the porch. It was warm summertime. This is written, I believe, in the little book called Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Or either it was in a little book called I Was Not Disobedient to the Heavenly Vision. And laying on the porch, I suddenly was awakened and a burden come on my heart for my father. As many of you people here of the city knew my father, I think he was a great man, though he was a sinner, and but he had a bad habit that I've tried to fight against that thing as hard as I could through the age, that's drinking. And that night he was drinking. And I woke up with a great burden on my heart for him, and just with my pajamas on, slipped on my trousers, my pajama shirt left on, I wandered out through this broom sage field to just about where this stands now. And I knelt down to pray for my father. And while I was praying and asking God to save him and not to to let him die a sinner, that I loved him. And while I was in prayer, I raised up to look up towards the east from here, and there was a vision. And standing just above me, many of you knows the vision, was the Lord Jesus. Now, I'm not allergic to illusions, as I know of, but visions are real. And there stood the Lord Jesus, the first time I'd ever saw him in a vision of that type. He was just about, oh, probably ten feet above my head, standing in midair with one foot just making a step. He had on a white garment, a fringe around the side of it. He had hair down to his shoulders. He looked to be about a man, about what the Bible said he was, about thirty, but a small, thin-built fellow. Very small, looked like he would weigh over 130 pounds. And I looked and I thought there was something that I might uh, be wrong. So I, I rubbed my eyes and, and looked up again and he was standing kind of sideways, kind of a profile of his face. And the looks of his face, which I've always seen in the visions, has been like Hoffman's head of Christ at 30. That's the reason I have that in my house, on my literature, wherever I can put that, because that's the way it looked, more like that, only he seemed to be small. And I, as I was looking up at him, I thought, surely I'm not looking at my Lord standing there, and I was kind of, I'd say, in this position, and maybe right where this, under where this pulpit sat now, somewhere right in this vicinity within with the radius of where I'm standing, the best I could measure off within 40 or 50 yards of somewhere around in this district here, this circle. And I looked up and he was standing there. And I bit my finger to see if I was asleep. Uh, you know how you, it just seems like it couldn't be so. And I was just young in the Lord then, about six months I'd been preaching. And I bit my finger. I took a broom sage and broke it off and Many of you people who live in the country know what that little toothpick like is in the broom sage. I begin to chew on that. And I said, it, it can't be. I'm a dreaming. There's my home. There's father, mother, and the children there. There's the old brick house pond that used to stand down here where I used to hunt ducks just about 200 yards beyond this. And here I am standing in the field. It's got to be so. I kicked against the ground, stomped my feet a little bit, and shook my head and, and wrung my hands looked up again, looked away, looked again, and there he was standing there. And the wind started to blow, and I seen the broom sage blowing, and when it started blowing, his garments blew with it, like a clothes hanging on a line to begin to, to flip. Uh, he was standing there. I looked at it, and I thought if I could just get a look at his face. And he was watching east, right this way. He's watching it tensely. And I moved a step around to get a close look at his face, 
And I still couldn't see him very well. He had his hands in front of him, rather hid from where I was standing. I moved around again and I cleared my throat, something like this way, <clears throat> to see if I could attract his attention. But he never moved. Then I thought, maybe I'll call him. When I said, Jesus, he turned his head. And when he looked at me, he just raised his arms out. That's all I remember. For about a, nearly daylight, I was laying right out here somewhere where this place is now, in the field, my pajama shirt all wet with tears where I'd been crying and I had passed out. His face had characters that no artist could, could draw or paint. They could not do it. He looked like a man that if you would look at him, he wanted to cry with sympathy and respect with reverence and yet with enough power that it would speak, it would turn the world over. And the characters could never be caught by an artist. And I never know to this day what that meant. But here I am tonight after 30 years standing in an auditorium that's dedicated now to the service of Almighty God and me just a, a lay member, really just a, a local elder in the, in the Baptist church here which Roy Davis was pastor at the time. And I am... Now, standing here with a place crowded right over the same grounds with the, for what I think is the purchase of the blood of Jesus Christ himself in my hands to bring this four days message of the Lord. Just about six months after that, I had my first baptism down here on the river when the light came down right here at Spring Street. Many of you people might want to go down and take a look at it at Spring Street and water right at the riverfront. And there's where the angel of the Lord appeared in public first and uh, at two o'clock one afternoon. And a voice came from it, said, As John the Baptist was sent to forerun the first coming of Christ, your message will forerun the second coming. This is 30 years later, and here I am still tonight proclaiming that message. And around the world it's went. And I'm glad to be back in my hometown tonight to represent this Lord Jesus Christ that I still love with all my heart, and each day he grows still sweeter than he was the day before. I have never changed one iota in my doctrine. The first thing I started with, I still believe the same thing tonight. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now I have a message that I'm responsible for. When the message first started out, it was, of course, everybody was praying for the sick. Great signs, wonders, and miracles that started especially in the Pentecostal people, a universal revival of a healing campaign that swept the world for 15 solid years. There's been revivals on every hill there is, I suppose. Revival fires are burning. Literally millions have accepted Christ as their Savior for that one commission that inspired from there to old Roberts and so forth and on and on as it's went around. After the Pentecostal church was laying in its dead slump as it was then. My intentions and desire tonight is to awaken that church again to the coming of the Lord Jesus at hand. I have to rebuke it. I have to rebuke sin in whatever manner it is. I don't mean it to anybody's denomination. I have a message. Now, it's hard to get in a church for a sponsorship, just as it was with our Lord Jesus. Because it's Him, it isn't me. But as he preached at the first and healed the sick, raised the dead, and cleansed the lepers and cast out devils, everybody wanted him. But there come a time where there's a message that always follows every sign because the sign has a voice. But when he sat down one day and said, I and my father are one, that was more than they could stand. It was also when he said, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. How, why doctors and well-thinking people would have said, this man's a human vampire trying to get you to eat his flesh and drink his blood. He never explained it. He just said it. And tonight you might hear things and through the meeting it's just said. We might not be able to explain, but remember, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We believe it. Now, we don't have time to talk too much because we've got certain times to start here and certain times to get out. And we want to honor the school board which set these times for us, and we'll do all we can to honor them. 
Remember, at any time a sinner wants to come to Christ, all you have to do is walk right up whether I'm preaching, singing, whatever it is, and give your life to Christ right then to stand in your seat. That's what we're here for, to help you. I want to talk to Brother Vale, Brother uh, Robert, uh, Borders, and the brethren here. If I wonder if they couldn't have in the church in the afternoon or some morning or something instruction service for those who are seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Would that be all right, you brother, brother Neville and all of you could get there, Brother Ken? If anybody wants to be instructed in the baptism of the Holy Ghost, why don't you come to the tabernacle? What would be best morning or afternoon? Morning about 10 o'clock? About 10 o'clock of a morning. If you got a question on the doctrine, if you got a question on the message, if you, if you want to be, if you never got ministered to personally, you want to be prayed for, or anything that you want to know in them matters, why don't you just sit down there at 10 o'clock uh, in the morning and see these men? There'll be one or more of them there to instruct, to pray for the sick, to answer questions. This is a personnel man with you. You just uh, go to them, and they'll be glad to help you in any way they can. Now... Just before we approach the Word, we want to approach the author of the Word again. You might eat too much. You might drink too much. You might laugh too much. You might walk too much. But you'll never pray too much. I would that man pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without doubt or wrath. Let us pray. Dear Jesus author of the word of life and you are that word we solemnly now approach thee after the explaining of the vision that god you bear me record that that is true lord jesus i pray that you'll anoint the words tonight to the hearing of every ear that's under the divine sound and if there be some here or listening in out across the nation, if they are not ready and prepared at this hour to meet the challenge of the hour, the message from God, to repent and to be ready for the kingdom of God is nearing, we pray that it will be so tonight with them that they will meet this hour's challenge. Oh, God, I would pray for help, knowing the responsibility and what it means and what I must answer at the day of the judgment for all that I say here and elsewhere. Help me to be deadly, sincerely, Lord, with all that I do or say in thy word, that it might bring forth fruit, for as your commission was let not this word depart from thy mouth, but meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all that's written in the law, and then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and very courageous, for the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. Lord Jesus, make it so tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friday and Saturday from 10 to 12 at the Tabernacle at 8th and Penn Street will be instructions, answers to doctrine, prayers for the sick, and what more. Come right down. If you have any question, anything you need, there will be man there to, to handle it. The Lord bless you. Now... For this opening service tonight, I can't do nothing but open it straight to our message. That's what we're here for. And now that's what I come back for. And Sunday morning, the Lord willing, I want to meet that great challenge of the day about marriage and divorce. Now, in Galatians 4, 27, I wish to read these words. 4, 27 to 31 inclusive. For it is written, Rejoice thou bearing that bearest not, break forth and cry thou that travailest not. 
For the desolate has many more children than she which has a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the Spirit, even so is it now. Nevertheless, what saith the Scripture? Cast out the bondswoman and her son. For the son of the bondswoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondswoman, but of the free. The Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Now, I believe here that I take a text like this, very odd, unusual, but sometimes we find God in those odd, unusual hours, unusual ways, unusual things, because God is unusual, and those that really serve him from their heart serve him in an unusual way to the things or the ways of the world. This text is called, The Seed is Not Heir with the Shuck. Paul here is speaking of the literal seed of Abraham's two sons. Paul gladly is bringing himself in the position of the birth by the free woman. Now we know that Abraham had two sons by two different women. God gave him a promise by Sarah through Sarah, rather, that there would be a son born, and through this son the world would be blessed. All nations would be blessed of this son. And it's commonly believed, especially amongst the Jews, that this was Isaac. But it wasn't. This promised son of Abraham is Jesus. And he is of the royal seed promise of Abraham. But... Abraham having two sons, one by, by Hagar, which was his wife's maid, a lovely, pretty Egyptian maid that Abraham had picked up down in Egypt uh, for her to be her, his wife's maid. And Sarah, thinking that God would not be able to keep all of his promise true, she told Abraham to take Hagar, her made and to marry her, which polygamy was legal in those days, and to bring the child, and that's the way God had it planned, that she was to have the child only through Agar. But we find out that that wasn't so. Now we understand also that God is perfected in threes. Now God is perfected in threes. Grace is five. Seven is completion like the world. God is perfected in Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That's the perfection of the Godhead. All one God in three manifestations of three attributes of one office, of three offices in the one Godhead. Now, there is also three in perfection of the steps of grace to the church. Justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost. That consists of the new birth, just like a natural birth is tied to by it. Which a woman giving birth to a child, the first thing comes forth is water, blood, then life. The Bible said in 1 John 5, 7 or 7, 5, I believe it is, that said there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, which was the Son, and the Holy Ghost, these three are one. There are three that bear witness in the earth, the Word, the water, blood, and Spirit. Water, blood, and Spirit. These three agree in one. Now the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are one. You can't have the Father without having the Son. You can't have the Son without having the Holy Ghost. But you can be justified without being sanctified. You can be sanctified without being filled with the Holy Ghost. We prove that in the order of nature. Now, and many of you may, may be strange to you, and I, I'm without education. I'm sure you already understand. But I teach in types. 
as the natural types of spiritual. Now we see that there are three in the perfection. God is perfected in threes. Now, and that was in the perfection of the seed of Abraham was Ishmael, Isaac, Jesus. Ishmael coming from the bond woman, Isaac coming from the free woman, and both of them with sex, but Christ Jesus coming from the virgin. No sex. Here the seed, one, one seed, not seeds, but one seed. These others were not seed of Abraham because Abraham's seed was his faith seed that God was speaking of, not his natural seed. Because after Sarah died, Abraham married another woman and had seven sons besides daughters. So it wouldn't be Abraham's seeds, it was Abraham's seed, one. And that was Abraham's faith seed pointing to the royal seed that was to come through Abraham's faith. Not Abraham's natural life, but Abraham's spiritual life. Amen. Who took everything contrary to God's word and called it as though it was not. And believed God against hope, believed in hope. That's the real seed that we're speaking of. Here we are presented with a picture of the seed started, the seed of promise started in a slightly doubted doubt of the original promise. See how it starts low and doubt in the original promise. God promised Abraham through Sarah to have this child. But now watch, the first seed of Abraham by the bondswoman come by Sarah, doubting that this could happen because she was old and past the age of barren. Now that's how the church starts. That's how it always starts. You start from the bottom. You don't start from the top. A man trying to climb a ladder, tries to get on top first, he'll break his neck. You've got to start and build up to that. And here we find the beginning of the promise of God being made manifest through a slightly doubted, interrupted program of God. That's the same way sin began in the Garden of Eden. That's how death started by sin. was when one word of God was misconstrued or doubted. You can't doubt or misplace one word of God that's thus saith the Lord. The word be so. And here's Sarah, even to who the promise, Sarah being a woman which is a type of the church, gave doubt to the original program of God's promise word and said, You, Abraham, my husband, take unto you this beautiful maid and live with her and be a husband to her. And God will give this seed of promise to her and I'll take the child. See? Just bypassing one little iota changed the whole program. Therefore, we've got to take every word of God as thus saith the Lord. Every word of God is truth. Here the seed starts then in a promise, slightly doubted. Isaac being the seed of the free and promised woman, brought forth as Paul was trying to explain here in Galatians, he brought forth the natural promised seed. And he goes on to say here that the, the bondswoman's children cannot be heir with the free woman's children. Because they are of two different categories. And that is true. The unbeliever cannot be heir with the believer. There's no way at all. That's where the trouble is today. You can't make a denominational chicken believe with an eagle. You just can't do it. That's where the trouble comes. You've got to believe every word of God. You just, you're not heirs together, neither will you, will you join with it. You cannot do it. You've got to be eagle or chicken. It could not be heir with Ishmael, the seed of the bondswoman, of the, because of the doubting Sarah. Doubted God's word that God was able to keep it. Notice, Abraham, you see what I'm building on for Sunday morning. Abraham did not doubt it. 
Sarah did doubt it. She was the one. It was not Adam that doubted. It was Eve that doubted. So, then we'll find out more about those as we pick it up Sunday morning. Neither can the spiritual be, uh, the natural be heir with the spiritual. No more can Ishmael's children be heir with the, with the Isaac's children, and no more than the carnal can be heir with the spiritual. Church, natural, church, spiritual. There is a church natural of these women here type. And there's a church spiritual also. So the natural church and the spiritual church cannot be heirs together. There are two different separate times, two different separate peoples under two different separate covenants. That's why the rapture is different and will only be for the royal seed of Abraham. It cannot come by the natural carnal seed of the church. It'll have to be the royal seed of the Word of God uh, through Abraham. The royal seed. That's why the rapture has to be first. Of course, remember, we which are alive and remain shall not hinder, prevent those which are asleep. For the trumpet of God shall sound the dead and Christ shall rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them together and meet the Lord in the air. Notice, and again it's written, and the rest of the dead live not for a thousand years. Therefore, there, they will not be heirs together. They will not be in the rapture together. There's absolutely a church natural and a church spiritual, a church carnal and a church spiritual. Now, see, here is no, there is no judgment to the royal, spiritual, predestinated seed of Abraham. Or they are predestinated to eternal life. They have accepted God's provided sacrifice and that sacrifice which is Christ the Word. And there is therefore now no condemnation. St. John 5.24, if you want the Scripture. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Romans 8.1 Walk not after the flesh, but the Spirit. In Romans 5.24 He that heareth my word, the word there is understandeth. Any drunkard or anything else can hear it and walk away. But he that heareth my word, understandeth my word, and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. And shall not come into the judgment, but pass from Amen. death unto life. Yes, sir. Amen. He that this great mystery of the God made known understands how that God was in Christ reconciling himself to the world. How that he and the Father were one. How that the great mysteries of the fulfilling of God taking and bringing himself manifested in the age of human beings and in the strain of human beings and in the company of human beings to make his word manifested in the day in the eastern rising of the sun and to do the same thing as the sun sets in the west to make itself manifested in a bride church. A word made manifest. It will to he that understandeth that is to know that's been revealed to him of him that sent me has everlasting life and will not come into the judgment but pass from death unto life. The natural seed was only a carrier of the spiritual the seed. Like the stalk, tassel, and shuck. We went through that before at another message, but I'd like to preview it a little later, or go back to it again just for a minute. Now here there is three stages of the seed shows us the true picture the three stages of the natural seed in the earth. Like a seed is planted, brings forth a stalk, little blades, shoots from it, then the tassel, then the pollen hangs on that, and then the shuck, and then the seed again. What's these stages of this perfect parable here and how it works out exactly in the type because God is the author of all nature. Therefore, nature cannot fail no more than God can fail because He was the one who set the thing in its condition for, for us to look at and to see. Notice, Hagar, the stalk, which was the first beginning of the seed springing up. Now, it didn't look anything like the seed. It was a stalk because she was a bondswoman. Not in the promise at all. Nothing to do with the Word. 
just a transporter of the seed. Notice, Sarah, the tassel, that had the pollen that Jewish nation raised from her. From time out of Sarah, brought Isaac through Isaac, brought Jacob, Jacob brought uh, the patriarchs, and through the patriarchs brought forth a nation. Mary, the virgin's faith, produced the true spiritual seed word made flesh. See? The three women. Three women that this seed was carried to. One of them was actually an adultery on her polygamy. The second was a free woman and the third one had no sex affair at all. But by faith she believed the word of God. Hagar, Sarah, both Sarah and Hagar was sex, but Mary was virgin by the power of the promised word of God. That's right. The stalk, Hagar, two wives, doubted the promise. But watch what that brought forth. When Hagar, the second wife of Abraham, which was just a, absolutely a concubine wife, but she brought forth a man. But what kind of a man was he? The Bible said he was a wild man. He lived by his bow. And no man would conquer him. He's untamable, unconvertible, unregenerated. He could not be tamed. He was a wild man. Because he was of the contrary to God's word in anything that's contrary to any preacher, any lay member, any church that's contrary to God's word will bring forth a wild adulteress. A bunch of worldly Hollywood. It cannot stay with the unadulterated word because it's not even included in the promise. No. Sarah, the true wife of the promise, the being the tossel, brought forth a gentle man. In uh, returns, brought forth a promised nation that served God. But Mary, by no sex at all, but believe the promised word Amen. when she was a virgin, knowing no man. And the angel of the Lord met her, said, Hail Mary, blessed art thou amongst the women, Amen. for God is with thee. Amen. And she said, How will these things be? He, she said, The angel said, The Holy Ghost shall overshadow thee. It had never been done in all the ages, but Mary believed God. And she said, Behold the hands made of the Lord. Amen. She believed the word. How is she going to have it? She knew that Hagar had the baby by a sex desire with Abraham. And Sarah had the baby by sex desire with Abraham. Children of promise. The bondswoman and the free woman. But here she's asked to believe. That's a contribution to the faith that was in Abraham. Who believes the impossibles as long as God said it so. Amen. That makes it right. Amen. She believed God. Hallelujah. Never questioned. She said, Behold the hands made of the Lord. No matter how much criticism I have to bear from the world, be unto me according to the There come forth the genuine seed. Sarah could not do it because it was sex. That's right. And neither could Sarah because it was sex. Neither can the church under sectarianism. Amen. It takes a virgin belief in the Word of God that made the promise to bring forth children. Amen. Sectarianism will never bring forth the huge born church. It cannot do it. will bring forth a substitutionary something. It will bring some, forth something that imitates it. Something that tries to be like it. But a genuine born again church of God believes the Word of God in a case of anything. Because... It's unadulterated. It's by the promise of God that these things come. Yes. Mary, the true one, said, by the outset, said, Be it unto me according to thy word. Behold, thy hands made. And she brought forth, what is she bringing forth? Not a wild man, not a nation, but she brought forth the word. God himself made manifested in the flesh. Amen. The true seed of God that manifested every promise that God made in the Bible. Without Him, no man can live. Without Him, she was the true seed. She was beyond the. T she was the shuck that brought forth the grain. Now, the other two was carriers of life only as a natural seed. Mary, 
Now remember, I said the other two, now Mary don't make her God as some people tries to make her. She was not a God. No, sir. She was only a carrier of the seed like the rest of them was. But like faith in the Word brings more to the real image. Like as the corn matures or the wheat, it comes forth a stalk. Then it comes forth a pollen. Then it comes forth a shuck. But when you think that shuck, if you don't watch, it'll look just exactly like the real wheat. But when it's opened up, the real wheat's on the inside. It's only a carrier again. So you see, Mary, not through sex, but through faith, something exactly like it, Mary was not that seed. Mary was a carrier of the seed. He was a genuine faith seed. Because the word of God is by faith that he gave to Abraham, and only faith can produce what God said he'd do. Faith in his word. Notice how uh, more like the real thing Mary was. But like the shuck, the shuck hugs a seed in itself and protects it and nurtures it until it's standing alone mature. So has this third church age of Pentecost. Matured, holding the grain until it's time to open up the shuck. Mary, being the mother of Christ, just an incubator. He was no blood of Mary. He was no blood of Jew. He was no blood of Gentile. He was the blood of God. God created this blood. It could not be sex. He wasn't Jew nor Gentile. The baby is not one speck of the mother's blood. The blood comes from the father. We know the hemoglobin's in the male, like a chicken. It can lay an egg, a hen can. But if she hasn't been with the male bird, the rooster, it'll never hatch. Amen. It's unfertile, though it looks exactly like a real fertile egg. Every nature of it looks the same, but it hasn't got the life in it. That's the way with people who profess Christ. Many of them look like Christians, try to act like Christians, but you've got to have Christ on the inside of you, which is the Word made manifest. Or it'll never mature into a real Bible-believing Christian. It'll always be a denominational something. It cannot live because there's no life in it to live. An egg cannot hatch. It rots right in the nest if it hasn't been with a, with a male bird. Just like members of a church. You can baby them and call them, make them deacons and everything else, but they'll, you have a nest full of rotten eggs unless they're mated with a mate. That's right. Carrier, the shuck, it nurtured it. That's right. Then it, that is the seed itself, has to leave the shuck. Or the shuck has to leave the seed to get the seed in the presence of the sun so it can be ripened. All in type, we see. See here now how close she, the church of this last days, gets to look like the seed itself. Look how this denomination of Pentecost that's raised up in the last days, and we'll explain it a little later on. Think how they come so close to looking just exactly like the seed. When a shuck comes forth out of a grain of wheat or a blade of wheat, after the pollen has fallen in there in a second stage and produced a third stage, which is the, the, the shuck. And how that, that, if you are not a real post observer, you'll never be able to tell but what that's a real grain of wheat in there. When that first little grain comes forth, it looks like a grain. But you sit down and open it up and you'll find out there's no grain there at all. Amen. It's only a shuck, Amen. a carrier of the grain. Now the grain comes forth from that. But remember, there is no more after that shuck. Remember, there was no more seed promised to a woman anywhere after Mary. And there's no more denominations promised after Pentecost. It's a rapturing bride coming forth from there. The seed, the word made manifest again. Notice, see how close it looks. Matthew said, St. Matthew 24, 24 said that the two spirits in the last days, the church spirit of the church people and the bride spirit of the bride people would be so close together to it would deceive the very elected if it was possible. That's how close. Look how it's come through the stall. Now notice, we're going to type something here. Luther, in the church age, of bringing forth the bride seed was the same in spirit, just one little grain of seed Luther stood out on. That was justification by faith. He was the very type of Hagar, the stall. Notice, Wesley was type of Sarah, the Philadelphia in the age of love, that brought forth the tassel that in Wesley's age is more missionaries than any other age we've had. The great missionary age of John Wesley's time. But Pentecost represented Mary, 
Mary, the last stage of it. Now, she was not the seed. Amen. Yet the life of the seed was in her. Yes. But it hadn't matured yet. Amen. I feel very religious. Amen. It hadn't matured yet. It was there. But it wasn't matured. So is it with our Pentecostal age that we're living in. There's got to come forth a, a word of God that's inner, undenominational, outside of the rims of that denomination. Amen. Luther went to Husk with his first word, the just shall live by faith. Wesley had two words, sanctification, second definite work of grace. Pentecost had the third word, the restoration of the gifts. But the entire seed has to come forth. Amen. See how they denominate it on one word and another word and another word, but there's got to be something that cannot be denominated. Amen. It's the entirety of the Amen. life that's in there it has to reduce itself again. All right. There cannot be any more church ages after this. We're at the end, brothers and sisters. We're here. We've arrived. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now, we see these things are just as true as they can be. Still, we notice then if her being the tassel, or uh, Wesley being the tassel, Pentecost then being the shuck, which is the next stage of the coming forth of the grain. But brother, sister, the stalk is not the grain. Neither is the tassel the grain. Amen. Neither is the shuck the grain. Amen. So each time it matures, it looks more like the grain. Amen. The stalk don't look like the grain. Then what comes forth the tassel, a little bulb? It looks uh, more like the grain than the, t than the blade does. What comes forth next? The shuck. It holds the grain. It nurtures the grain. Now look back here at the promise God made to Abraham. Of thy seed, speaking spiritually. Any of us know that. Amen. He's speaking of Christ, not Isaac. Amen. Through his faith seed. Notice, the first was by a bondswoman. That look anything like the promise. God don't have to take back His word for nobody. Amen. God said how it would come, and that's where it'll come. But Sarah, being a representative of the church, type of the church, it she found out there that she said, "Well, I believe this is a little too phenomenal. I just can't even believe in that." So you go get Hagar, and you take her for a wife. See that that stock didn't look like the promise at all. But when Sarah came forth, now that looked pretty good. It looks a whole lot more like the promise there. But still, it wasn't a genuine promise because Israel and Isaac failed yes. and denied the genuine seed when it came on. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Don't get excited. Don't run. That won't hurt you. Amen. Denied the seed, crucified him, and hung him on a cross. Amen. Just like Paul said here, did not the, the seed of the of the free woman, of the bondswoman, persecute the seed of the free woman, and so does the seed of the denomination persecute the genuine grain. It's always got to be that way. They're not be heirs together. They're not associated together. They're absolutely two different promises, two different times, two different peoples all together. One's a bride and the other's a church. No comparison at all with them. But still, they are not the seed that's promised to come. Neither was Sarah Neither was, uh, neither was Hagar, neither Sarah was, or, or neither Mary was the seed. Amen. Mary was not the seed. Amen. She was a carrier of the seed. Amen. But she had nurtured, brought forth out of her womb. Just like the shuck brought from its womb the real seed. But the shuck is not the seed. It only is closer to the seed. It's hugged up around the seed. Way back in the stalk, the life is scattered all through the stalk. And when it comes to the pollen, it's gathered down closer. But when it comes to the shuck, it's right down there like the seed. It forms it almost like the seed. Amen. Jesus told us what would be in the last days. Be so close to see the very elected, if possible. But then the seed comes forth from there, and the shuck, the life leaves the shuck. And the shuck is a carrier, and that's just exactly what our denominations has been, a carrier. Luther, Wesley, Pentecostals, and now it's time for the seed to come forth. Notice, notice, just she was not the seed, Mary was not. Just a shuck, tossel and stalk, carriers a part of the word. Not all the word, Luther had justification. 
Wesley had sanctification. Pentecostals had the restoration of the gifts. But when the Word comes, now they could produce that, the justification will save a man. You believe that? Amen. Sure. It's the carrier of the Word. It seems I believe the stalk is part of the wheat. Sure it is. But it's the carrier. It ain't the life. Then long comes sanctification. How many believe in sanctification? You believe the Bible, you have to. Sure. So still, that's not. That's a little more like, that's two more words. But then come the Pentecost, the restoration of the gifts. Speaking in tongues, they call it the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues. Now they call that the initial evidence which brought forth the what? The shuck. But they denominated. But when you come to say, I and my Father are one and these other things, then the shuck pulls away from it. But the real genuine bride church will bring forth the entire Word of God in His fullness and in His strength. For He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Notice, in the wombs of Mary was the seed. But when the seed was delivered, it said, I come to do the will of Him that sent me. I and my Father are one. If I do not His works, believe me not. There was the seed. Which one of you can condemn me of unbelief? What the Bible's promised I do, I've done it. God has verified that through me, He said. Who can tell me now? See, but the, the seed in Mary, the shuck, it was close to being that, but it wasn't. It was still in the womb. <clears throat> Notice, and in the Pentecostal age, through the Lutheran age, through the Western age, it's been the same thing to this Pentecostal age. Now, look. But at the opening of the seven seals, Revelations 10, the full word is to be born into manifestation again and vindicated by the Spirit of God in the full strength as it was when it was here on earth, manifested in the same way, doing the same things that it did when it was here on earth. Amen. 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 Hebrews 13, 8 said, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday day and forever. And St. Luke 17, 30, Jesus said, In the last days as it was in the days of Sodom, when the Son of Man will be revealed in Himself again, it will be the same thing. The world's in a Sodom condition, and the churches went into Sodom with it, like Lot and his wife. And I say that there is an elected church somewhere in this world that's thrown out and set aside from those things. And the manifestation of God has attracted its attention. We're at the last days. The shuck has given forth its strength into the seed. It's going on out. It was a good shuck, but it served its time. See, it is the word bride of the word groom. The natural seed of Abraham, of Isaac, and Jacob, and our natural seed, rather, of Ishmael, natural seed of Isaac, and so forth, had to go into the ground in order to, to bring out this other, bring out Jesus. And so has all these others. The seeds has to dry. And, I mean, the shucks has to dry, and the pollen has to dry, and everything dies so the seed can produce itself. Amen. That's the way it's been in every age. Denominations has been the carriers of part of it, part of that is the word, for it has been hid from the wise reformers or the sealed away from them until the age of the eagle appear. The Bible said so. Yes, sir. Because we're promised that in Malachi 4. Exactly we are. Amen. He's hid it from the eyes of the wise and prudent. As we just went through the book of the Revelations, we find out that every, all three of those messengers of those beasts that went forth, each one suited Luther just right, each one seated the other just right, which is the oxen, the different animals of the Bible. It went forth to justification, sanctification, even into the Pentecostals, but the fourth was an eagle. Amen. That's right. And through that age, God raised it up. So it has to come through that age to be correct. Yes, sir. The eagle promise being fulfilled of, of Malachi 4. Jesus was not of Mary, but came through Mary. Like the life through the shuck. Now, many of you find Catholic brothers here or sisters tonight maybe think that Mary was mother of God, as you say she was. How could she be the mother of God and God had no beginning? And no end. Who was the father of God then? If she was the mother. He was her creator. And she was not his creator. 
He created Himself in the womb of Mary. Not her own creation. It was He created Himself. He was not of her, but she was of Him. That's right. The Bible teaches us that all things were made by Him. And not nothing was made but what was made by Him. So how could He, how did he have a mother <laughs> when He was God Himself? Now we see here the true revelation of the true type. There's three women carriers of the natural seed until they matured into Jesus. How Ishmael could not be because he was born really in what we think today out of wedlock because he was a bondswoman's son. Then come a little more like him, like Jesus, which come out Isaac. But it still wasn't because it was born to the sex between Sarah and Abraham. But then along came Mary by the virgin birth produced Jesus Christ. That's right. God the Word made flesh. Now look, there were three women. There are three women typed here. Churches, the women always types churches. Means three denominational ages, carriers, which also must die and dry up. It's like the shuck and so forth does to give room for the seed. The seed cannot get right, cannot get right, brother, until the shuck stalk and leaves are all dry. Amen. That's right. It saps every bit of the life in them out. Amen. Amen. All of it was is that plus. Amen. Cannot do it. Now, it's seed time or bride time. Amen. The shucks are dead. The shucks are dried up. The virgin word time. Not touch, it's a virgin. Remember, a virgin word time. If you put it in the hands of a denomination, it sure won't be virgin. <laughs> It'll be manhandled by the time you get to it. Amen. But God's church is not touched by denomination. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a virgin born Amen. word of God made Amen. manifest. Amen. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. How oh. oh, wonderful. I love it. I believe it. I know that it's the truth. It will not be touched. There will be no denominational manhandling in the virgin birth of the bride. No, sir. She's, she's commanded by God to come out of such. Touch not their unclean things. They become vultures. Just reminds me as I was coming from Phoenix the other day, coming to Tucson from the meeting. The Spirit of God called my attention to something as wife and I were going along talking and the children were sleeping in the back of the car getting late called my attention to a hawk and I watched that hawk a little bit and studied him he's a very type of the church today now the hawk as we all know has lost his identification of his original creation that's exactly right once he was similar to an eagle his greater brother a hawk was but now he doesn't fly in the skies no more to hunt his heavenly manna. But he has gotten soft. He don't fly in the skies anymore. He hops on the ground like a vulture. Amen. Sets up on a telephone post. Amen. <laughs> Pops along hunting for dead rabbits. Yeah. The hawk wasn't made to do that. No. He was made to be similar to an eagle. Now that's just like the church. It was made similar to the eagle. It should take the place in the heavenlies. But instead of that, it's got soft. It don't fly into the unknown no more, into the blue. No, sir. It's depending on its modern ways of adoption, of education and theology in some man-made denomination. Looking for a bunch of dead rabbits, half rotten, that's something else. Hopping along the ground. Amen. That's right. A hawk. See, that's what tells. The eagle hasn't changed a bit. He stays the eagle. He doesn't soar into the sky as a hawk does anymore to catch his fresh manna up there. But he depends on what he can find already dead. A hawk don't have to say he's supposed to get on the ground. But watch an old hawk today. Go down along the road. You see the telephone wire setting full of hawks. See if he can find something. Something's killed. Something rotten. Something. He's got so he hasn't got wings enough to fly. He's the first thing you know, he'll be on the ground altogether. Grounded because he's got soft. He don't use his strength the more. That God gave him his special identification was to sail into the skies and watch down from below. But now he gets down below and can't even look up. He's got his mind on dead rabbits to find out what he can find on the road. Some skunk possum or something somebody's run over. He's not an eagle. 
But it's something like it, just like the church, depending on its food for education and so forth, a dead dyke that died years ago through Luther and Wesley and the Pentecostals and gone on. It's looking back for some man-made creed instead of flying up into the heavenlies of the Word, where all things are possible to them that believe. He's tuck up the habits of the buzzard. Them dead things was left for the vultures, the world. Educations and so forth like that was left for the world, not for the church. He's so soft, he, don't, he ain't rugged no more. He can't get up into the rugged heavenlies where all things are possible to them that believe. He sits back and says, well, Dr. So-and-so said certain. My denomination don't believe it that way. Oh, you perverted hawk. <laughs> Afraid to break out upon the promises of God. Amen. You say, well, the days of miracles is past. <laughs> You're soft. Yeah. You're scared to take your wings of fire. Yeah. Have you come too soft for a prayer meeting? Yeah. Have you come to a place yeah. that you're scared to stay over ten minutes at the altar? Amen. Hop along like a vulture, eating dead of carrion on the ground. Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. He's too soft to take the rugged beyonds anymore. Hops like a vulture and eats vulture's food. <laughs> That's what it is. That's right. Amen. Until he begins to look like a vulture. Glory. He acts like a vulture. <laughs> he ain't no more a hawk than nothing. <laughs> He's more like a vulture than he is a hawk. A hawk's supposed to sail. Amen. Not sit on a telephone pole and watch for a dead rabbit. Amen. And then get out and pop up and down the road like a vulture. All right. <laughs> That's just about the way the church has today. Amen. What's the use of going up there and sailing around when I get rabbits here? <laughs> But they're dead. Yeah. They're rotten. They're contaminated. One time they were good. Amen. So was the doctrine of the Lutheran Wesley and the Pentecostals. Amen. Amen. Why you eat like a vulture? There was new manna found every night out of the heavenly part of the children of Israel as they journeyed. Anything left over was contaminated. We used to say the country got wiggle tails in it. There's too many of them wiggle tails in our experiences today. Our religion's depending on what somebody else said, what somebody else said, and the promises for some other age. A man come to me not long ago, a Baptist preacher up there in my house, and said, you know, said, I just want to correct you on something. I said, why? said, you're trying to teach an apostolic doctrine over in this age. said, the apostolic age ceased. I said, when? <laughs> I'll tell you when it began, you tell me when it ceased. Amen. I said, you believe the word? He said, I do. I said, all right. Now on the day of Pentecost, do you believe that's an apostolic age start? He said, I do. I said, then the speaker, Apostle Peter, said these words. And remember, Jesus said, whosoever shall take one word out of this or add one word to it, his part will be taken in the book of life. That's a preacher. Or somebody's got their name on the book. I said, Peter said, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise is to you and to your children and to them as far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call. When did it go out then? It's always been in. It's a bunch of hawks that's turned out to be buzzards and hopping around on some other dead carcass. Amen. Some other age kill for them. Amen. Right. Not fresh manna from the heavens anymore. They don't want it. They, they, they can't have a prayer meeting. Not eagle to begin with. Soft. Not rugged. Just hops around. So is our modern denomination dependent on education. Yes. There's some man-made theology to explain all these things away. And they accept that. Yes. You won't take the word that said Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You won't take Malachi 4 and you won't take all these other promises pertaining to this day and said how the church age, how the prophet said it shall be light in the evening time. Amen. Amen. They don't take this. They want to hop around on what some Pentecostal organization Amen. killed a hundred years ago. Uh, eating on half rotten manna. Amen. That's right. It's no good. Amen. Notice, the church is so carnal. Feeds itself on worldly a Karen. Dead things of the world. It's like the vulture does. Church politics. They don't let the Holy Ghost send a man to a church. They have to have a politics and see if the denomination is going to receive him or not. That's right. They're like the world. They dress like the world. They look like the world. They act like the world. They're vultures like the world. They're lazy, soft compromisers. Amen. That's all there is to it. Do you ever see an eagle compromise? No, sir. There's no compromise in it. Neither does a genuine Christian. 
He ain't soft. He'll hunt till he finds it. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. He'll find his meat. He wants fresh manna. He'll get down there and dig till he finds it. He'll fly higher and higher. If it's not in this valley, he'll raise a little higher. The higher you go, the more you can see. So it's time for eagles of this day to get the flying higher. Dig into God's promises. Not live on vulture food that's been killed years ago. Get out of it. Politics, voting in, voting out. Saying this, that, the other, and the Holy Spirit has more right away in the church than nothing. No more prayer meetings. No more agonizing with God to fulfill His Word. No more believing that the Word is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. They just vulturized down, got a denomination, put their name on the book, got lazy and soft, and sat back there gloating on some kind of a dead or carrion. And then supposed to be at least a hawk that's a similar brother to the eagle, the prophet that brought the true Word and manifested it. Relies on half rotten man made theology. <laughs> Where does he get it at? In some man made Sunday school program sheet. Amen. Some educator killed for him back in some seminary. <laughs> Tell him that the days of miracles has passed. There wasn't no such a thing as the baptism of the Holy Ghost. No, this is nonsense. You mean to tell me that an eagle would eat that? He couldn't do it. No, no, no. no, sir. Neither will a Christian eat on them dead appearance from old denominational doctrines and things. They want the Word of God. Trust the promise of the hour. God promised rabbits in the days of Luther. He promised other things in the days of others. But now He promised us a full square meal. The full seven course menu for all the seven seals are open and everything is ready for the Word of God to go to Hawks hopping like buzzards. No, oh, my. Think of it. How critical how, how the hour is. Just as a hawk has long lost its identification as a hawk, so has a church long lost her identification as a lesser bird brother of the eagle, God's prophet, wants the carrier of a true word, justification, then become a carrier of sanctification, then become a carrier of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, restoration of the gifts. But then when he goes on and keeps going back and trying to eat something manna from another day, it's rotten. It's no good. A genuine eagle of this day knows that was all right, but we got that plus. Until Jesus Christ is made manifest in the fullness of His power as He promised to be in this last day. She is now a dry shuck. It's past. The Spirit of God passed through her. It's true. And will not, she will not be heir with the vindicated seed word. She sure will not be. She'll not be in the rapture. She'll be a church member. It may come up in the second resurrection. Be judged according to what she's heard. If you're here tonight just a church member, what's your judgment going to be when we all have to stand there and witness you heard the truth? See? She no more flies into the blue, into the unknown, unto the supernatural, where the powers and heights and the promises of God's eternal word is made possible all things to them that believe. She won't believe that. She said, she falls right back on the telephone more and said, my denomination says the rabbits is all right. Though they got maggots in them, but yet they're all right, see. She depends on that. Pentecost is like her denominational vulture sister, sitting now in large council seats of the ungodly, certainly. Listening to her whirly politic head feeding her own vulture food of dead rabbits of something that passed by 50 years ago. That's the condition of the Pentecostal church. Oh, my. Just as Sarah tried to bring the promise of the supernatural by by hand-picked hagger, so has the church trying to bring a revival. Our great evangelists across the country today, a revival in our time, a revival in our time, all you Methodists, Baptists, Pentecostals all get together. How can you have a revival of fresh manna on an old dead vulture? How can you have it? Revival in our time. The revival will be so small they never know it ever happened. Pentecostal said, oh, there's going to be a great thing happening. It's happening and they don't know it. Yeah. That's it. See? Yes, sir. For where the carcass is, there the eagles will be. Yeah. 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 
what it says. What is the carcass? The Word. He is the Word. The carcass, Christ. Christ in you. The same yesterday, today, and forever. How true it is. Sarah trying to get the promises all fulfilled, you see. In a great, like the church today, a great revival in our time. By what? Uh, by a perverted promise. How you go to do it when God never did bless an organization? He never did use an organization. When a message went forth and they organized, it died right there. I challenge any historian to show me where it ever raised again. It died right there and stayed right there. God just moved right on out of that carrier into another one. Right on out of the Lutheran into the Methodist. Right on out of the Methodist into the Pentecostals. Now he's moved right out of the Pentecostals into the seed. Because it has to be the seed. You can't beat nature. There's no nothing else there for it to happen but the seed. So the seed will produce itself. He's the same yesterday, today, forever. The same pillar of fire showing the same signs, the same power, the same God, the same miracles, the same thing. Vindicated the word in the Bible just exactly. He's the same yesterday, today, forever. He's leading tonight. God help us to see it and believe it. Sure. See Sarah, the church, hand-picked Hagar? It didn't work, did it? No. Her hand-picked group won't work today either. Doctors and PhDs and LLDs don't do it. All the carriers fail. Luther failed us. Hagar did. What did Hagar do? Hagar gave her son to another woman's bosom. Amen. All right? Amen. To raise her child. Hagar did that. Gave her son, her only son, to another woman's bosom. Not his mother. Amen. To raise it. That's the same thing Luther did. When he gave his son justification over to a denomination of who was. Exactly. To raise him up. Amen. Wesley failed the same way as Sarah did. Doubting his supernatural birth. Being the baptism of the Holy Ghost as Sarah did at the oak tree. When Wesley was introduced to the supernatural. When the Pentecostal age come on. And Wesley was introduced to speaking in tongues. All this they laughed and made fun of it. All you church of Christ. And you so called. And you Baptists and Presbyterians. Every one of you turned your nose up on it. And went away from it. Amen. Right. What would you do? Wesley you sold your child. Amen. To an organization. And it died and perished. It's exactly right. But the word, the true word, went right on. It didn't stay in that organization. It moved right on into Pentecost and talked some more with it. It's a more matured son. Like the seed that fell into the womb. And after a while it started in the backbone. Then they have lungs and had head and feet. And after a while it come to a place that it was born. That's right. So that's how the church has matured the same way. Wesley doubted just exactly like Sarah did the tree. She said, when the angel of the Lord, a man dressed like an uh, angel, God it was himself, Elohim. Dressed like a man, stood there with dust on his clothes and said that he had given the promise after Sarah was 90 years old and Abraham 100. And Sarah laughed up her sleeve and said, how could this be when Abraham and I haven't had, well, we haven't been as young people, family relationship maybe for 20 years. She's nearly 100 years old. So me have pleasure of my Lord, me old and him old too. And his stream of life is dead and my womb's dried up. My breast is gone. The milk veins are gone. How could I have it? God said, I promise it. Amen. He's coming anyhow. Amen. So did Wesley. How can we accept them speaking in tongues and divine healing and stuff? It's not for us in this day. God said, I promise in the last days I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He promised to do it. And he went on and done it anyhow. Amen. And the Wesleyan church with the, all of its little pollen sisters of Baptist Presbyterians and Church of Christ and Nazarene's Pilgrim Holiness and United Brethren and what for died right with it and the church moved on. Amen. Now, what did Pentecost do? Organize. It's just like the shuck. It done the same thing. It organized itself together. Set itself in as a shuck. That's right. Pentecost was as Mary. Pentecostal feast, look what Mary did. What did Mary do wrong? At a Pentecostal feast one time, she was faced with a bunch of dignitaries, priests, when her son, she couldn't find him anywhere. And she went back three days' journey. She'd left him, like the modern church today. About three times five, or 25, has a church left. About 50 years ago, or 75. No, left him at the Pentecostal feast. Mary went back up with Joseph three days looking for him. She'd been looking for him, couldn't find him. She found him. What did she find? She found him in the temple discussing the Word of God with the priest. And right in the front of those priests, those dignified, Mary let the curtain drop. Amen. She did exactly the thing she should not have done. 
call her God, the mother of God, a mother ought to have more wisdom than her son. And she said, your father and I have sought you with tears for a day and night. <laughs> your father and I, claiming that the birth wasn't supernatural, that Joseph was the father of Jesus. She denied the supernatural birth. Pentecost talked speaking in tongues. They denied the birth of the Word. That's exactly what it did. He'll take so much of it, but won't take the rest of it. It denied the birth of the Word, just like Mary did. But watch! There will not be any more organizations after this. Watch the Word itself. Yet 12 years old. Just a little bitty thing back in the shop. He said, don't you know I must be about my father's business? The Word corrected the church right there. What are you doing all these things for? You know you can't do this. We'll close up our doors. We won't let you come in. Boy, know ye not that I must be about my father's business. (laughs) Sir, sir, the true supernatural charm, she just claimed to be Joseph's son, a mere man. Or what Pentecost did this claimed to be one of three. I know that hurt. One of three, but he was all three in one. But the Pentecost, oh yes, he is the son of the father of the Holy Ghost. Oh my. But the real true word speaks right out and said there are not three of them, there's one of them. You know not the word of God? (laughs) Not three of them, but one. Notice, there will be no more carrier mother churches, denominations after this carrier shut. Because at the shuck, there's no more, no, nothing left of them but just the grain. Is that right? Amen. It's got to be the grain. It's got to be the same kind that went into the ground. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. A spirit come up on the bride to do the same things that he did. See, it's a reproducing again of the grain. The word, yet young, spake for itself. And know not that I must be about my father's business. <laughs> there's the secret of the message now. Just Exactly. The Father's business. What is the Father's business? Could you think of what the Father's business was in Him? To fulfill what Isaiah said, a virgin shall conceive. Fulfill what Isaiah said again, the lame shall leap like a heart. And all these things that take place. Uh, like Moses said, the Lord your God shall raise up a prophet among you. Like I mean, it was the Father's business to fulfill that word. Well, if that come down through them stalks of them natural women, what about these stalks of these spiritual church women? Churches means women. Women means churches, rather. Is that right? Then what is it now? We must be about the Father's business. The wheat would cry back the grain. Yes, sir. What was to do? Vindicate. Malachi 4. Vindicate. Luke 17, 30. Vindicate. Hebrews 13, 8. Vindicate. St. John 14, 12. Vindicate all of His Word. Vindicate Hebrews, I mean, Revelations, the tenth chapter of the opening of the seven seals and the mysteries of God, even the serpent seed and all, will be manifested. Marriage and divorce and all these other mysteries has been hit under the pillars for all these years from the theologians and so forth. Those now they are. That's the Father's business. Think they wouldn't receive it? They want to be dignified and say, our denomination don't teach us that, but the Bible does. Right. God vindicates it to be true. Sure it is. Fulfilling this age when the seven seals are just proven the denominations have just been carriers. That's another one of the Father's business. To prove. And the Father's business now is to show you them denominations is not His. There are man-made systems that deny the Word. Right. Notice, you say, well, Mary, the great virgin, at the cross, He never called her mother. He called her woman. Carrier, not mother. (laughs) True, she was a carrier of the Word, but she was not the Word. He was the Word. (laughs) Oh, yes. Notice also, she was not identified in the resurrection with Him. He died and rose again because He was the Word. She was just a carrier. (laughs) She died and still in the grave. (laughs) That's right. So she was just a carrier, not His mother, not God. She was just a carrier like the churches are. That's right. Show she was just a carrier, not the Word. Let's close by saying this. Oh, Pentecostal hawks. <laughs> Hopping around like vultures. Partaking of the world, just like the rest of them does. Amen. Having a form of godliness. Enough to deceive the very elected, if possible. 
but denying the power thereof, as says the prophet here. A perfect example of what God's Word said it would be in the last days, a lady will see a church age. Naked, blind, miserable, poor, wretched, and don't know it. Claiming that she's big and wealthy, has need of nothing, and don't know that she's changed from a hawk, a similar brother, to a prophet to keep the Word of God straight. She's turned to a vulture and feeding her people on dead ecclesiastical rabbits. Exactly. Wake up! How do you expect to be identified or heirs with the eagles? <laughs> when such things as that, in this great hour, when the rapture is at hand. Oh, Christian, oh, believer, if you've been a partial believer, keep on attending the meetings for just a little while, will you? we got something here I believe the Lord wants you to know. It's late. I can't go any further. i got to close. Maybe finish tomorrow night. But look, let us bow our heads just a moment. I don't want you to notice what grammar I use, but I want you to take heed just a minute to what I said. It's plain enough you could understand it, I'm sure, if you desire to. If you're here tonight, and you're without this experience, I don't say, you say, I've danced in the Spirit, jumped all around, yeah, Hawks do the same things like the crows and the vultures. I'm not asking that. What are you eating at home? Where are you getting your daily diet? Where are you feeding from the Word of God or some old oh, caring that's been used back in our years and years ago? Is your experience even tonight with something that you picked up many years ago or is it fresh and new tonight? New manna that just fell from heaven and you're feeding your soul on it looking tomorrow for something good and better. If you're not that way, now, with your heads bowed, your eyes closed, and your hearts bowed, ask yourself this sincere question. And not to me, but to God, would you raise your hand in a testimony of saying this, God, condition my soul and my spirit that I can feed only on the Word of God. Would you just raise your hand and say, God bless you. God bless you. I don't know just exactly how many is in here this tonight. I'm a very poor judge of crown, but I'd say at least a third or more raise their hands. That they want conditioned souls. Let us remember in prayer now as we bow our heads. Dear God, I'm only responsible for saying the word. And by these little simple parables, little types, the people see that one's not going to be heir with the other. And we know that in the last days there's going to be people that's going to be raptured up into the heavens. And some of them will be here when Jesus comes. And we're looking for him to come even tonight. And I'm thinking of 30, about 30 or 33 years ago, knelt here, maybe this time of night, long 9.30 or 10 o'clock, praying for a father that was lost. Tonight, Lord, I'm praying for many fathers, many mothers and brothers and sisters. Won't you have mercy, dear God? It's too late now for my father to do anything about it. He's passed beyond the boundaries of this life. And soon, Lord, we're all going to pass that way. I, too, must go that way. Every man and woman, boy or girl in here has to go that way. And we will be accountable for what we do with the Word of God. How little did that man seem in the sight of David when he was spitting upon him? How little will those people think to spit upon Jesus the Word when He returns again, those that pierced Him? How little will the people feel who could walk away from here and see even, a, even not only in some great uh, Greek words and so forth, but in plain nature that teaches us God, the Creator, can see the carriers of the Word and see the Word itself and know the hour we're living and harvest time is here. Dear God, let us not turn our back upon it for some folly of the world, but let us tonight receive him with all of our heart. Lord, create in me a good spirit, the spirit of life, that I might believe all thy words and accept Jesus, the word, the same yesterday, today, and forever, and believe today on the potion it's allotted to this age. Grant it, Lord. I ask it in Jesus' name. Now I'm going to ask each one of you,
as you're here and thinking of this real sincerely. We don't have a church for you, John. We have a pool down there to be baptized in. As many as believe was baptized. If you've never been baptized yet, but Christian baptism, that don't mean sprinkling, pouring. That means by immersing. Not in a title of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, but in the name of Jesus Christ. Like the entire church was baptized until the Catholic Church in 303 introduced three gods and three forms of baptism in a trinity titles. If you haven't had that yet, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, there's robes and things waiting for you down there. Won't you come and join with Jesus Christ, not with us. We don't have a church even here to take care of you. Go to any church you want to, wherever you come from. But please, believe this word. Do you believe it? Say amen. 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 God bless you. May you do this. Anything we can help you, we're here to do it. Now, I know this is sick here. Our time's got away from us tonight for prayer line. Maybe we'll get it over. I want each one of you to do something for me. You're sitting close to somebody. Lay your hands over on that person. And no doubt, you're putting your hand upon an eagle. Maybe an eagle that has been eating some vulture food somewhere, gotten sick of it. They don't want it no more. They want to come out of it. They're sick and tired of it. Sit here tonight and see what eagles really can eat. The Word and have a living Christ living among them, showing Himself alive. The same yesterday, today, and forever. They don't want to be heirs with the shucks. They're to be burned. All the straws and things is to be burned. The combine's coming to beat the wheat out. You want to be wheat. There's some of them that's sick. Some of them physically sick. I want you to pray, eagle. Pray for your brother, sister eagle there as I pray for you here. May the Spirit of God come upon you. Remember, I'm giving you the food of the eagle, the promise of God. He calls his prophets eagles. He calls himself an eagle. He's Jehovah eagle. And while you have your hands laid upon one another, pray for them. Our Heavenly Father, your word said the last commission you give to your church would go into all the world and preach the gospel. The general orders. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. If they should drink any deadly thing, it wouldn't hurt them. If they take up serpents, they'll not harm them. And if they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Oh, Jehovah Eagle, feed your little ones tonight upon that word, Lord. They're needy. That's the diet they need. That's what they need to know what the food is. What thus saith the Lord is. You promised if they laid their hands on one another that they would recover. Oh, Lord God, take all doubts and vulture ideas away from us now and we feed solemnly upon the eagle food of the Word of God. Let every unclean spirit that's in these people, every spirit of doubting, every spirit of fear, every denominational clean, every habit, every sickness, every disease that's among the people, leave in the name of Jesus Christ. May it come out of this group of people and may they be free from this hour on that they can eat the eagle food that we're believing you'll send us through the week, Lord, breaking open those seals and showing us those mysteries that's been hid since the foundation of the world, as you promised. They are yours, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All that believe and accept, stand to your feet, say, I believe, I accept that what God promised me, I receive. The Lord bless you. That's wonderful. Every person standing, that's good. A card, I love him. Let's sing this hymn to him, man. I love him, I love him because he first loved me. All together now. I love him. If you do, let's raise our hands. I love him. He
shake hands with one another. Brother Eagle, just turn around, sister, shake hands as we sing it. I love him. On Calvary Let's raise your hands again to him your faith, yes. the world sees your action. Amen. Love one another now. Be kind to one another. Amen. Talk with one another. Be patient with one another. And any Amen. further instructions we can give, baptism, Amen. seeking the Holy Ghost, we don't have any room here to do that in. You understand. The altar call, if God's convinced you that this is right, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today, and forever, and you want to join with Him, go and be baptized in His name tomorrow. Amen. There'll be man there to instruct you. Anything that we can do to help you, we'll do it. You on the telephones now? Tucson, over in California, way up in the east. Raise your hands way out in the Praise Him. Shut. Until tomorrow night, I give you Brother Neville, our pastor.